Okay, I'd like to show you something that nobody's seen before. Let me uh, first turn on the light so you can see what we're looking at. We're looking at a gigantic monster magnet, thousand dollar monster magnet, and a true optical glass um, precision prism sitting on top of the magnet. So we know that light is a coaxial circuit. Longitudinal dielectric, transverse electrical magnetic. Obviously, there's only one field in the entire universe. That's dielectricity, loss of that, inertia. Field perturbation is magnetism. Light, everything in the universe is obviously electrical. So what do you think is going to happen, since now that we know, since I'm the only person on Earth that knows what the hell magnetism is and what defines a magnet, since we know that, well, a Gauss meter will read the center of this magnet, extremely high Gaussian flux will taper off towards the midsection then get really high near the end. But what a Gauss meter won't tell you is that the nature of what is here is totally different than the nature is what is here. We have centripetal convergence here, point of increasing inertia and acceleration. We have centrifugal divergence here, increasing force and motion. This is actually where true magnetism is, and this is where magnetism disappears into dielectricity. So that means that, just as we see underneath the ferro cell, and no one's ever seen this before, ever. And you can ask your science professor to explain this. And all they'll do is drool on themselves like a lobotomized idiot or pee their diapers because they're clueless. All they're doing is regurgitating the crap that they read before them in their doctoral dissertations to get their PhDs so they could teach other people the same crap that they were taught. They'll never have an answer for you on this. So I'm going to take the optical prism. We're going to shine a light through it at the same angle here, except we're going to put it on the centrifugal edge in one spot and the centripetal on the other. So let's place it right there. Let's take a look right here. You can see where I have the flashlight position. It doesn't matter if it's super precise, as long as it's roughly there. You'll see a parabola. Let me place it at the correct spot here, pointing towards the center. You'll see a parabola of light right here. Take a close look. Just like this. Shaped like a steep U. Right around the centripetal point. And a black strip right at the center. Okay, let me give you a better definition. Get in closer. Okay? So no matter kind of where I place it, you get the exact same image, okay? Doesn't matter where I place it, the image is the same. Twist it a little bit, but the same image. So now, let's place the prism at the center of the vortex, and this is exactly what there is. There's a hollow here. You can see it underneath the ferro cell. There's a vortex right here at the center. There's actually a vortex along the rim, too, except along the rim is centrifugal, outward vortex. Here at the center is centripetal, convergent vortex. So now, let's shine it right here. Doesn't matter how I do it, you're not going to see that. All you're going to see is a thin white line coming out. Single stripe, there's no parabola, none whatsoever. Just a thin white line coming out to the centrifugal edge. But along the center here, we have two black voids. Okay, that's what the point of centripetal convergence. So we got this contrasted along the fat, flat to faceted edge from the center to the centrifugal edge we have a different total attribute. I'll show you that in video number two right after this using I'll show you here you turn on the light I'm going to show you that using a different methodology I'm going to show you something that you've never seen before let's get rid of the prism this is an aluminum and brass flywheel and we're going to take a look at the difference using this device. Okay? Check out the next video. Bye.